Hello everybody and welcome to another one of our training videos on leadership. Over the past few weeks we've been covering all aspects of leadership, how to become an effective leader, how to become a better leader, what the leadership traits and qualities are, what the skills of leadership are, and how you deal with those in your everyday life. And I've been seeking to share with you based on my own personal experience and knowledge of leadership. Now, the subject we're going to talk about today, or the area, I believe is one of the most fascinating, one of the most challenging, but one of the most exciting as well in terms of leadership. We're going to focus on a particular group. And that particular group, putting them together, are millennials and Gen Z, or Gen Z, as the Americans say. The millennials... They're aged roughly between 25 and 40 years of age, and the Gen Z somewhere between six and 24 years of age. Now, inevitably, less than about 16 or 18 years of age, they haven't entered the workforce, and therefore we're not gonna count them in, but they are of that age group. But the point here is that they have actually got a distinction as far as the Gen Z is concerned of being what we call digital natives. In other words, they were born and raised in a world of digital. Many of them grew up at a very young age, two, three years old, where they already had iPhones or iPads, either to keep them quiet or because their parents felt it was necessary as far as their education is concerned. So this is a fascinating group. They push you as a leader to your limits. They push you as a leader to extend beyond what you thought was possible. They push the boundaries constantly. And I find that hugely exciting. And I hope you do, and I'll share with you some of the reasons why. So those of you who don't know me, my name is Chris Igwe. I have over 35 years experience working across five different markets in Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and helping lead, grow, and manage teams in those markets. Now, if any of this resonates with you, please feel free to comment, to share, to like, and subscribe to the channel. as We've had other videos that will be necessarily of interest, I hope, to you as well. So let's delve into this particular fascinating group. And here I want to share with you some of the key considerations when you're leading them as to why your approach to them has to be different from the traditional management leadership style that you've had before. Now, the first is to consider that their upbringing, the way they've been brought up and their background is going to be different from what you might have imagined. That is linked to parenting styles. They will be individuals whose parenting style in terms of their own children or the way they have been parented for the Gen Z, for example, is not necessarily traditional, maybe different, maybe unusual. You'll have to look at their educational background, their education Bearing in mind that today, many of the young people haven't been or have chosen not to be educated in a traditional model of upbringing. It may well be that they've been to, rather than maybe some of us who went to university, they've gone to colleges or local community centers to study and learn. So their education may be or will be very different. Technology, like I say, that's the fundamental element of what drives them is technology. So you need to bear in mind that they are hugely technologically gifted. They use social media, they use digital platforms, they use internet, all the things that our generation was not and is not as familiar with. You'll have to consider nationality. We travel a lot more, we live in different countries, and then there are marriages that provide for additional cultural layers within nationality. And then within culture, you also have diversity. So the diversity of those cultures within themselves, what they do, how they think, how they've been brought up, relig religious beliefs, not just in terms of religion itself, but whether indeed they are Christian, Buddhist, or anything else in between, or whether they believe at all. They could be atheists, agnostics, or Christians. So what is their belief? And therefore, 
which is different from here, but what is their belief system? In other words, do they believe in traditional leadership? Do they believe in a hierarchy of structure? Or do they believe in a flat organization? Do they believe in the I can, I must, I will kind of attitude? Or are they just laid back and for them, that's just the way the world is? Because that links into work ethics. Their work ethics may not be the same as you and me. The idea of a nine to five is definitely not what they feel they were brought up to do, to work in an office or any environment that requires them to work those hours or indeed to work hard. They might believe that they can work smarter and therefore not harder, and you will have to adjust to that. On this, very quickly, I remember, for example, with one of my teams where they were driven by and measured on the results that they had in terms of financial sales. And those sales, it was important for them to achieve in order to be recognized and indeed to get their commissions paid. And for some of them, I said, look, I realize that the idea maybe of being in the office from nine to five or nine to six is not your philosophy. But at the same time, if you end up doing and achieving those numbers in a shorter period of time and you want to sit by the pool or go on vacation and relax, I'd be open to it. They embraced it. Some of them actually did that because for them, I had connected with them at a level of understanding that they could work hard and achieve what they wanted and I'd give them some latitude. So those are all the things that you need to consider in order to engage from a leadership perspective, A, by understanding what drives and motivates them and the things that are not consistent with the way you see the world, but which is very consistent for them. Then it brings me on to these, and I've highlighted these as the group of why they behave the way they do and what matters to them. Now, I guess I should have said at the beginning, inevitably, it's a very broad group. Like I say, I've grouped Gen Z and millennials in the same one because there's a similarity. They're not identical. But then if you go to specialists, it will be broken down even more because inevitably a six to 10 year old doesn't behave in the same way as a 10 to 15 year old and so on. But for the purposes of this short video, here's what I'm telling you. And this is all based on my own experience as well as my own study, discussion with my peers, and indeed some research, is that they are driven by a need for community. They like the idea of being in a community as opposed to isolation. They believe in an environment that has collaborative elements. Collaboration for them is critically important. They believe very much in teamwork. The idea of working solo doesn't really appeal to them in the same way. And more importantly, especially for the millennials, although a few Gen Z in their mid twenties, it's about serving a higher purpose. In other words, if you try and drive their motivation based on achieving numbers and performance around the business, your team, your department alone, without having a higher purpose for the team, for the group, for the organization, for the business, they won't be as engaged in it as you might want them to. So these are the key elements, and these can be broken down, of course, is what they see as the motivator, and you have to have a language that engages with them in that environment. So how would you do it? Well, here are some thoughts for you. As a leader, I've put down here the things that I believe are really important in terms of your leadership style and your leadership ability to connect with the millennials and Gen Z. You have to be prepared to listen more. And by listen more, to be honest, it means listen longer. They may not have a two minute conversation with you. There may be so much on their heart that they want to share and say, and you have to listen to them. So allow yourself more time to listen and connect with them by giving them time for that conversation to happen. You need to give them latitude. My example earlier on of if they hit their numbers, they could head off on vacation, go to the beach, maybe come in later, but I wanna see they're doing their numbers, but I want them to understand that I get it. They don't wanna work in the same way, so you've gotta give them a bit more latitude in terms of how they see things. But you also have to give them responsibility. They like responsibility. It's a bit of a dangerous, Catch-22, do they have the skill, the knowledge, and the ability? And are you prepared to take that risk? 
but you've got to give them responsibility and engage them in order for them to be able to do that. Invite input on a project, an idea or thought that you have. They're very keen to share their knowledge and insights. And again, you look at those who are able to provide you with that. You don't just say, okay, let's hear all your thoughts. Give them problems to solve. They like solving problems. That challenges them and also shows that you respect and appreciate what they do. You've also got to balance being a boss and a friend. There's times when you've got to be tough about a bit of that tough love that I've mentioned in the past. You've got to show that you are the boss and whatever latitude you give them, if they overstep it or the responsibility, if they get out of hand or out of bounds, you bring them back in. But then you do so as a friend and you say, here's the reason why I didn't appreciate that or that didn't work or you were late with that project. Help them to understand and then give them feedback. But one of the most important elements perhaps is the fact that they need to be given responsibility. That one there is a crucially important one. Responsibility, but recognition. So once they've done these, they've solved a problem, you've given them responsibility, you've given them latitude, you want to recognize them. Recognize them for what they've done, what they've achieved, and don't recognize them in isolation. Recognize them in front of their colleagues. So they really feel that yes, you've understood what it is that is going on in their head. So that's a, a quick summary for you of the fascinating mind and behaviors and habits of the millennial and Gen Z generation. Bear in mind that people like myself, we're of a certain age, we've been around for quite a while. I've worked in companies where it has been essentially individuals who've started at 16, worked through the factory, through the office, through the business, and they're coming up to 30, 40 years, ready for the gold watch or the ring or whatever. They've put in a good innings in that particular company and they're rewarded for it. Today, it's quite the contrary and has, has been for quite a few couple of decades now. The idea of a millennial or a Gen Z staying in a company beyond a certain period of time just makes no sense to them. They'd rather, they're much more free in their thought and bearing in mind that they work on a digital platform basis, for them, the world is available in whatever form. They don't need to get rich by working 40 years or acquire wealth, even if it's not rich. They can do things literally in their pajamas at home. Different mindset, different culture, but fascinating to lead. And once you've led them and they respect you and understand you, it is one of the most rewarding age groups to look after. And I have, I've had the privilege of leading that age group for quite a few decades now, and it's just fantastic. Even when you are younger, or I was younger, having people who were older than me in that 25 to 40 age group is just amazing. So embrace millennials and Gen Z, look at ways to work together, use some of these ideas and thoughts which hopefully resonate with you. And if they do, please feel free to like, comment, leave your own comments so I know, know what your thoughts are and subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you very soon again. Thank you.